If you are curious, which I am by nature, and that means that's the essence of a researcher, to be curious. If you are curious, you will do a good job, no matter your background. I grew up in the middle of Ireland, so I was nowhere near the sea. Even though Ireland is an island, you know, we didn't live close to the sea, but I was always kind of fascinated by it. Yo realmente, cuando estaba en el instituto, en clases de biología, pues me, me impresionó mucho el origen de la vida. Me gustó tanto aquello que me enamoré de la bioquímica. Well, I suppose uh, I've always been interested in research. I've always been fascinated about doing research, about finding things that uh, we don't know or that we suspect may be, you know, the way they are. Always had a huge passion for the sea and for animals that live in the sea. Going with my mask and catching them and releasing them most of the time and harassing other kids, telling them that they have to put the fish back into the sea. It's too small, you can't kill it and all that type of things. I love animals and how things work. I mean, I was very much attracted to biology and how the biology, the living things work. This is something that it, it, uh, it happens to you and some other people like art. <laughs> I like biology and animals and that was the start of the thing. Sea traces, uh, we have to hear the name, trace. So it's all about traceability. In Europe, people actually want to know what they're eating. So we have to give them that answer. Ciao, sono Paola, ho 37 anni. Vivo in Cangas, al lado del mar. Six miles from the sea, more or less. 10 kilometers del mar, de la playa. About five miles from the sea. Et je vis à 5 minutes de la plage. 40, 50 kilómetros del mar. Eh? Eh, vivo a 100 kilómetros del mar, más o menos. Y también vivo al lado de la playa. ¿Qué es que yo veo cuando yo achete? Guardo todo cuanto. Guardo la marca, guardo los ingredientes. Qué importante el producto de proximidad. I more or less buy the same stuff all the time. A mí que sean productos locales me, eh, me es indiferente. Me fijo más bien en el tipo de pescado que hay del día. El precio, un poco todo, si hay una oferta. No todo el tiempo, pero se me arriba de, de regar la etiqueta. ¿Por qué traceability? ¿Por qué labeling? Bueno, en realidad, cuando we algo, you are alerted to the labels. ¿Qué está ahí? ¿Es algo verdadero? 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 I don't know, I guess stuff that's easy to find. Pues no lo sé. Credo que sea eh, conoscere la, la storia, il viaggio che ha fatto questo prodotto. Desde donde se empieza un producto de alimentación hasta el plato, hasta el final. I mean, you know, we're all consumers um, and I think, oh, like I was saying before, like traceability is something that I think people have a real attachment with. You know, I think, I think about wine and I think about, you know, if you know where how a wine is, you know, how a grape is grown and the temperature it's grown, you know, you're really, you feel really affiliated to it and you feel you really want to try it out. Can we start? Can we start? Good morning, everybody. My name is Rogerio Mendes. For those who do not know me, I will welcome you to this meeting. I don't know if you are aware, but this is the second project that we are having uh, on this field. We had formally, uh, the first project was labeled fish. It was a more of a, not so widespread as this project, it was more focused on the laboratorial we, questions. We uh, more or less organized, well organized, we can uh, achieve our goal of uh, discussing all the... In Citraces we have uh, tried to involve as much as possible stakeholders and, uh, and users. Stakeholders are producers and, and and industry in general. There are here uh, new people and maybe it's a good idea to uh, go in a Because there are not just scientists, you know, they have, you have literally every stakeholder 
in sea traces is has a has a bit of an involvement and so you can you you can really have clearly the feeling that you're not just doing this to publish another scientific article you are definitely doing this in the hope that our seafood supply chain is going to get better Let me just tell you first that the Sea Traces project is an important project mainly because it touches an issue that is uh, extremely important and it has been identified by the European Food Safety uh, Authority uh, as an emergent one and this is the issue of food fraud. Ya les había adelantado que vamos a hablar del fraude del pescado. Le panga en élevage intensif des poissons plutôt voraces puisqu'ils mangent 400 sacs comme celui-ci tous les jours. L'objectif est clair qu'il grandisse le plus vite possible pour être vendu rapidement. Esta especie devient de non autorisada en Portugal. El fraude del pescado no respeta fronteras. Uno de cada cinco pescados está mal etiquetado. Así lo revela un informe de la Organización de Conservación Marina Oceana que ha revisado más de 200 estudios de 55 países de todo el planeta. Because it's fraud, it means that somewhere, somewhere, things are getting mixed up on the food chain, and presumably people are, you know, you know, illegally fishing, or, you know, like there's a reason there's quotas for fish, and you know because the scientists were very careful of, you know, trying to work out how much, how many fish there are in the sea, and. Um, how many you can take so that they can bounce back the following year and if people don't buy abide by the rules you know eventually you know the, the fish populations will crash so anything that has to do with illegal fisheries uh, mislabeling and many other unlawful actions is considered to be seafood fraud this has extremely negative implications for fisheries themselves it basically is a risk for their viability, but also poses significant negative impacts to the general public, especially public health, because if something is not what uh, is supposed to be, then obviously we have the risk of, you know, getting diseases. And it's really important as well for smaller fisheries, you know, because there are artisanal fisheries around the place there's only a few boats and um, you know, the fish is really fresh and you know it's important for them to get a good price and you can only do that by sustainable fishing practices and a, a kind of a traceable system to prove that their fishery is sustainable and people will be willing to pay money for that. Básicamente, pues eh, hay diferentes estudios que cifran en un volumen importante de fraude en cuanto a una identificación incorrecta de la especie. Básicamente se trata de especies de menor calidad o menos apreciadas por los consumidores que se hacen pasar por otras de mayor calidad. There is a general trend in every uh, city, urban setting, where people have become um, increasingly disconnected with how food is sourced. It's a problem because it's, uh, it's at the basis of it, a heavily industrialized process has led to large supermarket chains having an increasingly high uh, percentage of food that is heavily processed, that is packed and chopped and is frozen and is plastified. And people uh, less and less frequently actually have the opportunity to see a whole fish unless they come from a coastal area or they come from a family that values nature and values the connection with nature. I have to guess the fish. Es una dorada, un sargo. O un sarguiño, no sé. Ah, es un merluzo. I have no idea. Parece salmón. O una lubina. Yo me estoy trompé. Es una merluza. Tallado así no la habré más idea. No es salmón. You need um, a good labeling to get uh, to make your own um, choice, yes? It says it's... Okay, so it's mass projected, so it's not from the ocean. No. Well, that's actually... This one is too. Este es de dos días antes. Este es más fresco. Pero realmente yo no me hubiera fijado. Tiene más ahí información para para lo que estamos acostumbrados. You need um, some methods or analytical methods to control these labelings, yes. And um, sometimes they are not 
a right. So um, it's it's very um, important to have these um, robust and reliable methods, and um, this is um, why we, um, yeah, this is, this is one of the tasks of this um, project. Datos muy recientes hablaban que el producto de la pesca local, de la producción local de España, con mayor volumen de desembarco es el mejillón. Este es un producto que es de los pocos que hay del mar con una denominación de origen. Implica que el producto tiene un origen, que las características y calidades de ese producto es dependen directamente de ese origen y que eh, en esas características influyen tanto factores naturales, pues calidad de aguas, etcétera, como factores humanos, la forma de producir que es única de aquí, aunque se intenta exportar, pero está perfectamente adaptada a este territorio. Y además, algo a mayores es producción, elaboración, transformación se realiza en este origen. No se puede coger mejillón de aquí. We think that coger. developing methods uh, to identify species offers information about the origin, the geographic origin of the, of the seafood. And in particular, in sea traces, we are going to work on the development of uh, methods for uh, finding the geographic origin of uh, masses. Sí, Todas sí. aquellas menciones vale, o sea, que, que lleven a engaño, porque al final les llevaron engaño, sí, 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 un bueno. elaborado, un eh, mares de Galicia no tiene un, una certificación detrás, no está bajo una DOP. Entonces, lo que, lo que, lo que intenta es aprovechar eh, esa sí, fama... Sí, de calidad. Es, sí. es, esa fama del producto, porque es así, ¿no? Eh, sin estar pasando los controles que debe pasar. Entiendo que además hay otra parte aquí, ¿eh? y es el tema salubridad, ¿eh? que esto sí es muy importante. Sí. Es decir, que con la trazabilidad vosotros también eh, o sea, garantizáis también la, la parte salubre, sí. ya, o sea, ya no sí, solo sí, la parte sí, de calidad. Sí, sí. El hombre empieza a, empieza a cocinar en las sí, zonas sí, sí, de, sí, 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 sí. de la historia para, para hacer que los alimentos sean más sanos y más fácilmente digeribles. Sí. O sea, y esta es la razón primera sí, sí, por, sí, la sí. Que, por, o sea, por la que el hombre empieza a cocinar. Y por lo tanto, o sea, eso yo siempre digo, o sea, cuando, cuando hago un curso, cuando comento y tal, digo, el que esté rico es la, es la, la segunda. segunda cosa más importante. El que esté rico. La primera es que sea salubre. We will focus on three to four, five case studies of companies that started, I would say, from a low grade of implementation of traceability and labeling. During this project, these schemes will be implemented, and in the end, we will see if it was a positive uh, result. And this will make some case study that can be shown to others to follow the same procedure and the same ideas. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Esposado. We are going to have a quick review of safety, safety measures regarding lifeguards, okay? So, this extension will be uh, the, the future oyster farm. So, it's going to be huge, uh, lots of units to control. That's why we are too keen on having a system to control, to, to, to trace where the oyster units are. So, this, what you see here, it are some, some RFID tags. Let me start by explaining what RFID means. Imagine when you buy some clothes or a perfume or whatever. Sometimes we hear the alarm in the stores. That's because the clothes and the perfume had an RFID tag on. So we can trace the oysters from the time they enter, very little ones, seeds, oyster seeds, until they go to the final customer. And that's a traceability like no other. Case studies are really interesting because it's kind of like, you know, industry in practice and, you know, how these companies change because 
the customers or the consumers are demanding that the you know that the fish be traceable and be sustainable. Nosotros hemos defendido siempre la sostenibilidad y en este momento igual más que nunca. Nuestras empresas además son empresas familiares que se han, ha habido siempre un relevo generacional y bueno, existía siempre mucha preocupación de dejar a nuestros hijos en unas condiciones buenas. Y el punto de partida lógicamente es el pescado, ¿no? que haya pescado en la mar. Hemos establecido cuatro días de, tres días de pesca a la semana únicamente por el tema del alto nivel de consumo de la cuota. Eh, seguramente hoy hacia el mediodía ya vendrán todos los barcos para aquí y algunos con anchoa y se venderá hacia el mediodía pues anchoa. Es la anchoa que tiene la MSC, ¿verdad? Sí, la sí, que sí, Lisa, sí, la, la anchoa certificada. Todos Eso nuestros es. barcos tienen la certificación MSC. Dentro de Sea Traces también estamos trabajando en un caso de estudio muy particular que es la anchoa del Cantábrico. Es un producto tradicional basado en, en pesca sostenible y nuestra intención es verificar qué valor le ha podido aportar a nivel socioeconómico la aplicación de una marca como es MSC a la anchoa del Cantábrico. Somos un centro tecnológico que nuestro mayor interés es la ciencia aplicada y aplicada a, a, la, a la sociedad, en este caso a los recursos pesqueros y a las, a las cofradías de pescadores y al consumidor final. La sostenibilidad engloba todos esos aspectos, desde el trabajo digno hasta la sostenibilidad biológica del, del stock y, y productos de calidad y con pescas tradicionales. Dimos el salto al MSC con muchas dudas y muchas incertidumbres. ¿no? Eh, vemos que ese salto ha sido positivo, pero me preocupa mucho ¿no? el cómo llega al consumidor ¿no? toda esta información, porque sí que vemos en el mercado que el consumidor está eh, como saturado ¿no? de tantas certificaciones, tantos sellos, y al final realmente no se sabe ¿no? qué hay detrás de todos esos sellos. Y hay un problema, yo creo, de, de, ¿no? de, de comunicación y también de información y de educación. El consumo responsable es una tendencia que va ganando adeptos. Poco a poco se va asentando, pero el consumo responsable necesita de información adicional, que muchas veces no está en la etiqueta. El consumidor está preocupado por cómo afectan sus decisiones de consumo a su entorno, pero si no tiene esa información clara, veraz, que garantice que, bueno, pues que lo que está comprando tiene un efecto determinado en su entorno, pues no va a poder tomar esas decisiones de consumo responsable. I like um, to get together and to find so new solutions um, for a better uh, consumer protection. Yes. This is the perfect job. <laughs> This is the perfect job. Found something new, you don't know why and you try to find methods and ways to find a solution and find an answer. And finding an answer, and not only finding the an answer, but also to telling that story to others, to making a good dissemination of the results. And to see that a lot of people around the world have the same problems, but did not found a solution or don't have yet on their laboratories. That's very interesting things. And sometimes, well, you feel proud. Muchas veces consumimos sin, sin entender o, o dano que podemos estar haciendo por consumir productos más baratos y e no defendiendo que o noso, que o noso planeta, que, que no hay planeta B. La gente que sale a pescar todos los días también hay que darle un valor a ese pescado. Es mejor y tiene el precio que tiene porque lo vale. Something without technology nowadays without ITC is something from the past. It's good to have the, the traditions kept, but we have to move forward. So, why not be the first to, to innovate? I want to innovate. <laughs> It's very important to me that I can help in some way, you know, to, um, to make the oceans more sustainable, you know, so that's a kind of a goal of mine. Uh, we cannot save the planet from the many threats it is facing, just a bunch of scientists doing strange things in a lab. We need the involvement of everybody. We need people to care about the sea and politicians to understand that they cannot just follow this 
completely myopic short-term gain approach they have been doing for such a long time. And I think that if the broad base of society realizes that we have to look after this planet, uh, it will have a very positive ripple effect across every area of society. Some people have chosen not to listen to us, and that is fine. We are, after all, just children. You don't have to listen to us, but you do have to listen to the United Science, the scientists, and that is all we ask. Just unite behind the science. And that also makes it exciting because you can uh, contribute to scientific advancements but also at the same time you can show all the different segments of societies that actually science can make a difference to everybody, everybody's life.